Hello, my name's Keith Rucker. So I've got the um, Victor safe out here and the goal today is to get this uh, blasted down where I can start doing some body work to it and getting ready to paint. And uh, my plan has been to use soda blasting uh, to clean this up. I've read a lot about soda blasting. People highly recommend it. I've done sandblasting before and quite honestly, I just don't like the mess it makes. And with uh, baking soda, it's pretty much biodegradable. It goes away on its own. So I said, man, this, this will be the way to go. So I invested in this little uh, um, the Alico A-L-E-K-O soda blasting kit. And uh, this holds about 40 pounds of media, which for what I'm doing, I think is, is more than adequate. And this came in this past week. And uh, anyway, I got it put together. Uh, quite honestly, I'm a little disappointed with this thing. Uh, not so much in in the construction of the tank and all that. It, it works fine, but man, they just cut so many corners with the parts that they put in this thing. Um, you know, the biggest thing I had was they had a little tube that came out, a little plastic tube that just kind of pressed in. There was no no way to tighten up that fitting in there, and it just leaked air. There was no way to get it to tighten up. So I, I went and bought a couple of barb hoses and put a real piece of hose in here. It was also so short from here to here that you couldn't pull this piece out. This has got a tube that goes all the way down to the bottom of the blaster uh, and you pour your media in here. Well, you could only lift it up about three or four inches and that didn't leave you much room to be able to pour the, the blasting media down inside the tank. So I've made some modifications to it. I put a new hose on there, it's longer. It doesn't leak air anymore. Another thing is that the uh, pressure gauge on this, that when it came, um, it didn't have one in the box. It just wasn't there. And I guess I could have shipped this thing back and had them ship me another one, but you know, I just ended up going spending 10 bucks and buying a, a new gauge that I shouldn't have had to buy. So I've, you know, this thing cost about 130 bucks. You know, it's fairly, fairly inexpensive made in China, obviously. Uh, and then I've had to invest another 20, 25 bucks in it. Plus all morning of my time trying to fiddle with this thing, get it to working. But anyway, I did uh, just hook it up and try it out a little bit ago off camera, uh, make sure everything's gonna be working and, and start doing some blasting. And, and uh, after the, probably 30 minutes of sitting here experimenting with this thing, I've basically come to the conclusion that it's, it's gonna be inadequate for what I'm wanting to do. So the soda blasting, what at least from my experience with this unit is, is that it does a great job in cleaning the paint off of this. Um, so anything that's got good paint on it, man, it just knocks the paint off, gets you a nice finish up underneath it. But the problem is, is I've got a lot of rust on this and you know, it will knock the top layer, the surface layer of the rust off, but it's not really cleaning that rust off. And there's so much rust on this particular piece uh, that it's just, it's not going to be adequate. So, you know, I guess lesson learned. This is, this is, I think, a very useful unit that I will be able to use for other applications in the future. Uh, but again, I'm disappointed in it for what I'm going to use on here. So, uh, with all that said, I'm going to go back to plan B, I guess now, uh, which is I'm going to drag out the, uh, a sandblasting kit, which is basically a very similar unit. It's a pressure pot, very similar to this, just much larger. Uh, we've got one out here at the museum. I've used it before. And again, I really hate using it because it just makes such a mess. But uh, at this point in time, I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up. I know that sandblaster will knock this, uh, the rust off of this and it will do it in short order. I could tell too that while this is working, the soda blaster, you know, it was probably going to take me an hour or two to clean this thing up. I expect once I get the sandblaster going, 20 minutes, this job will be done. So uh, anyway, we're going to put this up, drag out the sandblaster, and uh, probably do it the way I should have done it to begin with. All right, guys, uh, we're going to quit playing around and we're going to do this thing right. So I've got, this is a Rumlin uh, sandblaster. Uh, belongs to the museum. It's probably ought to be in the uh, collection of artifacts. It's so old, but you know what? It still works. And uh, Rumlin's still in business. They're based out of Milwaukee. Um, I don't. They don't make this model anymore. Uh, and I know probably five or six years ago, uh, we did some work kind of getting this thing rebuilt. We dug it out of the one of the storage buildings out here. It hadn't been used in years. And I had to replace some gaskets and uh, put a new hose on it here. Uh, and some uh, get some new tips uh, 
for it, but uh, you know, this thing works like a charm. I just fired it up just to get it running and man, I hit it for maybe just a second or two and it's already just cleaned that up right there just down to bare metal. So uh, I guess the downside this is, is it really uses a lot of, of, of air pressure uh, and you're blowing a lot of sand around. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna suit up in a Tyvek suit, put on a respirator, um, put on goggles, uh, gloves, the whole nine yards, because you really need some, some protection uh, when doing this. So, uh, And I may try to run the camera a little bit. I'm a little bit hesitant to get the camera out here. It just makes such a mess. I don't want to get all this grit in my camera. Uh, but uh, I may try to get just a little bit, show you how fast it goes, but uh, I'm not even going to try to run it for the whole job. It's just, it's too, I, I'm, again, I'm just afraid I'm going to mess my camera up. So um, anyway, we'll show you a quick peek of this. But anyway, we're going to do this, uh, I guess, the easy way, but messy way. Alright guys, I ran out of blasting media in here, but I wanted to show you this. Uh, uh, I just took a break, went to town, grabbed some lunch, and uh, got some more media. So this thing had, I don't know how much was in the tank when I started. Uh, it's just what was ever left in there from the last time we used it. And I didn't have any more out here. So anyway, I went to town, grabbed some more media. This is a, a, a medium grit. Uh, it's kind of a black garnet looking sand. Uh, made by Black Diamond. But I want to show you how this uh, sand blaster was made because this is kind of, uh, it's a heck of an improvement over that little soda blaster I got. So the top of this is almost made like a funnel. And uh, if you look, there's a little hole in here. There's a little ball here with a chain of weight. And there's a rubber O-ring in here, about a 3 8 inch rubber O-ring. And there's just a little dome-shaped uh, uh, piece in here and it just drops down and you dump the sand in the funnel it, it just funnels right in and then whenever you get through you pull that up when we put the pressure on there it creates a seal around that o-ring and it's all sealed up on that little soda blaster you got to take the whole top apart pull it apart take a funnel put it in there it's just a major pain this thing here is just super simple uh, to put new media in so we're going to go ahead and uh, load this up called Black Diamond uh, Blasting of Braces. Uh, it's made for running in a sand blaster. Uh, this is the medium grit, 20 to 40 uh, grit uh, is what I'm using. Guys, don't use regular sand when sand blasting. Uh, you can uh, get silicosis from that uh, or whatever it's called. But anyway, it's, it's bad for your lungs. So. Uh, don't, don't use regular river sand. Use a non-silica containing uh, media when doing this. It's just much more safer on you.
right guys we got this sandblasted you know it seems like every time i've ever had a sandblasting job come up it's in the middle of summertime and i've about decided that sandblasting is a wintertime sport at least here in south georgia we had a good rain last night and uh, it's just made it real muggy today and uh, it's been in the upper 90s so i'm soaking wet from head to toe uh, from sweat so uh, we're going to go ahead and just load this thing up and go into the house. I think I've about had it. I had planned on doing some other things out here at the shop this afternoon, but whew, I'm done for the day. Plus, I'm hearing some thunder uh, off in the distance, and I want to get this home before it starts raining uh, so it doesn't get wet and I have to deal with rust. So uh, we're going to load this thing up on the trailer. I got it on a pallet jack where I can move it around real easy and uh, take her home. Real happy with the out. Uh, come of, of it uh, you know it's down to the bare metal that sandblast and etches the metal real nice so this is pretty much uh, ready for a primer coat I do have some places I need to do some body work where they hit this thing with a hammer I'm not going to try to do a whole lot to it I want to keep as much of the original look to it as I can but I am going to at least try to get these uh, hammer marks out of the side and of the door uh, but we're going to do that in the shop at the house uh, where I got a little AC going so let's load it up and go to the house So after a lot of uh, good hard work and a lot of sweating yesterday, we got the safe sandblasted and I got it back home uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, man, I said it before, it was, it was really hot and muggy here yesterday. Um, I think temperature went up to about 97 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which is, uh, you know, it's pretty warm. But on top of that, like I said, I think I mentioned earlier in the video, we had a big rainstorm the evening before and it was just really humid in fact uh, uh, yesterday morning uh, when I went to load the safe up uh, to carry out to the museum uh, it was about 7 30 in the morning uh, I came out about 74 degrees uh, outside and just getting this thing loaded up on the trailer uh, to carry out there which wasn't a lot of work I had on a pallet jack just rolled up on the trailer I was soaking wet there's only 74 degrees I mean really high humidity um, and you know yesterday morning before lunch it wasn't too bad but once I got that got a little bit after lunchtime that Sun got a little bit higher up in the sky temperature got up there around 97 uh, and on top of being you know in that Tyvek suit wearing a respirator and all that man uh, it got the better of me I, I was I had had it when we finished up uh, out at the museum yesterday about 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, to head back in um, I think when I got home and took my shirt off, it weighed about three pounds. It was so full of sweat. So I pretty much spent the rest of the evening uh, rehydrating myself and uh, sitting on the Lazy Boy or sitting at the computer in the air conditioning. So anyway, uh, I've got this in the shop now and, and we're ready to start getting this prepped up a little bit better for painting. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, we got some rough spots in here. And what I have kind of already started doing a little bit is I've just got a sanding block here you know I've got some I think it's a 60 grit sandpaper pretty coarse right now you know I'm just trying to get a uh, a place started here and you know when, when we did the sandblast and we got a pretty rough texture on here which is good you want to have a little bit of a rough texture for your primer to grip to but it was a little bit rougher than I wanted so I've just kind of been sanding the whole surface here and um, you can already see like right in here I got some low spots and what you're seeing in there, that's actually the sanding dust in the bottom of this. But that's for someone beat on this thing with a hammer. You know, why, I don't know. We got an area right here uh, where there was a little bit of rust. And where that rust was, there's a little bit of pitting. Uh, it's not bad. And, you know, we've got all that rust out of there now. Uh, but again, you know, if we just put a paint, cut a paint right over this, it's not going to look very nice. Most of the top is, is pretty smooth. Uh, you know, I will say this, this it's not perfectly flat. Uh, this safe is just basically a metal shell around this thing that I guess that they formed up and it has that uh, heat cement on the inside and you can see I mean you can just look at it and it's, it's got some bulges to it but I think that's normal for these saves it's not you know it's not just perfectly flat but I do want to get this smooth uh, so I'm gonna work on kind of just getting this sanded down a little bit and uh, I can see where my low spots are we'll come in here with some body filler and uh, start working on filling these in
All right, so I think we're ready to start putting some uh, body filler on here, and I'm just using good old-fashioned Bondo body filler. You know, this is, uh, you know, I'm sure they make all kinds of uh, versions of this. And guys, let me just start out by saying I am by no means any kind of an expert on uh, doing body work. In fact, truth be known, I absolutely despise doing anything to do with uh, painting or getting things ready for paint. It is my least favorite part of doing any kind of restoration job. That's just me personally. I'd much rather be over there on a the lathe or a milling machine making up something from scratch than, than painting it up. But if you're going to do restoration work, uh, painting is, is part of it and something that you need to do, get to know and, and do. So, but, and again, I'm not an expert on this. I've done a fair amount of this kind of work in, in the past, but uh, a lot of you guys out there that, that maybe do a little body work uh, as a hobby or as a profession, you're going to know a lot more about this than I do. And quite honestly, uh, I've been over the last couple of days refreshing some of my memory by watching some YouTube videos from some other guys out there, uh, picking up a few little tips. Uh, it's, it's been a little while since I've done this. So anyway, uh, uh, I'm just using regular old Bondo. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to mix a little bit up. You know, one thing with, with this... Uh, with this uh, Bondo type material, you, it's a two-part system. So you got, you know, the the main filler part, and then there's a hardener cream uh, that you put on there. And when you mix it together, it's kind of like an epoxy. There's a chemical reaction that takes place. You actually feel the heat coming off of it when you do this, uh, and it will harden fairly quickly once you put the hardener in there. So you know, you don't want to mix up a bunch at one time. That's my main point. You know, I'm working in some pretty small areas here, so I don't need a whole lot of product. If I mix up a lot of it, I'm going to probably end up wasting it. So, I'm, you know, keep your mixes small. And, uh, you know, we'll start by, you know, I've already got the, the lid off of this. Uh, I'm going to take a little glob of this, and I'm just going to put it down. And, uh, you know, they make, they make some little sheets uh, kind of like this. This is just a pe uh, pad of paper. They make some that I think they're more plastic that you can mix on. I'm just going to use paper here because that's what I've got handy. Uh, but the nice thing is, is when you do a mix, you can just tear this page off, throw it away, and you got a clean mixing palette to work on. So, you know, again, I don't want to mix up too much at a time. Uh, I haven't got that much area that I'm going to be working with. That's probably plenty right there. And, uh, you know, we'll take the hardening cream. And, um, you know, most folks just say just kind of put a stripe across it about like that. And now we're going to sit here and mix this up. And when you mix it up, what you want to do is get it all to a consistent color. You don't want to have those blotches in there. You know, just take it and mix it up. You know, it starts out, this particular one starts out kind of gray. And we put a red hardener in there and it's going to turn more red. And the working time on this, once you mix it up, you've only got probably, you know, maybe five minutes or so to work with this batch before it starts hardening. Uh, so you need to be fairly quick you know we don't want to get in too big of a hurry but at the same time if you dilly daddle around with this stuff uh, you, it's going to harden on you and you're not going to get anything accomplished so that's that's mixed up so I'm just going to kind of come over here we're just going to put a little bit in there to start with and I'm going to start working this surface here right now I'm just trying to get a base layer down and let's come over here. I want to kind of fill this area in where this rust was. You know, I'm pushing down kind of hard, at least on this first coat here. You know, you can always add more of this stuff. So, uh, and you can get it too thick, particularly if you have a, something deep that you're trying to take a dent or something out. So, uh, you know, take your time. You don't have to get it all on the first pass. All right, we're going to let this just set up for a little bit. This will be a good first uh, layer here. And uh, we may have to come back and add some more. That's fine. Uh, one thing I am going to do is before this stuff hardens up, I'm going to try to clean these uh, scrapers up, you know, get these cleaned up so uh, it won't harden on here. It's easier to do it now than after it starts hardening. All right, so while we're waiting on um, 
that to cure up on the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on a couple of these other places in here. Uh, so we're just gonna mix up a little bit more, about like we did uh, the first time. You know, again, I don't want a whole heck of a lot of uh, product to work with, but a little bit. So I got some more uh, hammer dents down here on the back side. I've got a few little places up here on the top side I want to deal with still. I've got the uh, safe pretty much, at least the big dings knocked out on that now, at least with some filler on there, we're letting it harden. I've got the door up here next and I've, I've did a rough sanding on it and I've kind of circled some areas in here that uh, I know I've got some little small dings. He's got some pretty bad ones right here around. Dial will actually cover a lot of that up, but there are some, some dings in here in a couple other places. And uh, anyway, we'll put this up on the bench where I don't have to bend over. I'm getting old, my back doesn't bend like it used to, so uh, I like working up a little bit higher. Uh, but we'll go ahead and mix up a, another batch of this and uh, knock this out. So guys, we let this uh, just kind of set up overnight. Um, I did come out here and just, after it had cured up some, but wasn't real hard, I just took my, a sanding block with some fairly coarse sandpaper and just kind of tried to knock the hard spots, uh, the high spots off uh, before it got too hard. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I've just got a random orbital sander. I'm gonna start with an 80 grit uh, sandpaper and uh, we're gonna start sanding these areas down, just trying to get uh, get the edges to kind of just uh, feather into the, the uh, metal that's on here, as well as, you know, make sure we don't have any low spots in here. And if necessary, I can come back and put a little more uh, Bondo on here to build it up a little bit more. We'll see what we need to do uh, when we get down there. So uh, with the sanding, uh, I am gonna put on a little uh, uh, dust mask here, uh, you know, it's fine dust, you don't need to get it all inside your lungs. So uh, anyway, we're gonna put this on and get to work.
right, after working on this for a few minutes and sanding it down, I'm just kind of running my fingers across here and you know, we still got an area in here. It's a little bit low. I don't like the way that this area right here kind of finished out the top. And I also noticed a couple of spots that I didn't fill in that I didn't notice the first time around that I'm gonna See, I know this one up here. So there's a couple little. They're not. They're not big dents, but you know, I'm seeing them show up, and you know, I just want to make sure we get this real good. So um, we'll come back. Uh, you know, I'm going to finish working on some other places here, but we are going to come back with the bondo and um, and finish those up a little bit better. Um, anyway, we'll. I'll probably work on sanding the rest of this uh, off camera. It's pretty boring stuff. Well, after doing some sanding, uh, you know, I've got a few places in here even where I put the bondo that I need to just go back and do a little bit of work. And also circled some other low spots. You know, when I got that orbital sander out, I, I really found some spots in here that I didn't find the first time around. Found quite a few. Uh, most of them are very minor. I got the big dents out the first pass. Uh, but as long as I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and try to get these little dings out of here too. So um, we're just going to mix up some more bondo. Uh, Go through this process again um, again i'm not probably going to bore you with all this stuff uh you've seen the process of putting down bondo now and uh you know this is probably really just going to take a couple of days of me uh laying down some bondo uh coming in here sanding it out finding low spots building it up you know i'm going to take my time we're going to do it right and uh, hopefully have a nice product when we get through uh, when we do get this pretty much sand it out and like we want it, I'll come in here and I'll put a primer coat on it and then we'll come in here and we'll spray it black. So um, uh, again, I'm not gonna bore you guys with the details on this, uh, but here we go. All right guys, I think we're gonna wrap this video up. Um, you get the idea of what we're doing here. Uh, you know, I've been through two rounds now of uh, putting the body filler on here, one round of really sanding it down good, and uh, I imagine we'll be continuing this process over the next couple of days uh, until I'm satisfied uh, with the finish I've got. And that's typical for doing body repair work. It's not just going there and do it one time and be done. Uh, you typically have to build this stuff up over time, find your little defects, go in there and put a little bit more in there, sand it back down. It's a very time consuming and tedious job. Uh, but if you want good results, uh, that's what it takes, and that's what we're going to do on this. So, uh, anyway, uh, we'll get on to the next step of the Victor Safe restoration soon. Um, don't know exactly what that'll be yet. Depends on how some things line up, but uh, we've got plenty left to do this thing, and uh, hopefully soon we'll be putting some paint on it uh, and getting this uh, thing painted back up. I really want to get a good coat of paint on it uh, before this thing starts rusting. Again, we live down here in the south we got high humidity even though i got this in my shop now which is insulated and uh, i can run the air conditioner here to keep the humidity down uh you know if we leave this bare metal exposed for too long uh we're gonna have problems so uh, i want to jump on this and get this done as quick as i can over the next couple of days uh so that we can go ahead and just be done with the painting part of it at least getting the base paint coat on so thank you for watching and uh thank you guys for my many subscribers and uh leave me some comments uh Again, a lot of you guys know a lot more about what I'm doing than I do. And if you see some things, that, uh, some tips or whatever, uh, feel free to make some suggestions. Uh, because, uh, yeah, I, I sure uh, don't own all the knowledge when it comes to doing this kind of work, guys. I don't know, own all the knowledge on any subject, but particularly on this, I'm, I'm stretching myself a little bit. So uh, if you got any tips, uh, let me hear from you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.